Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and kind of show you guys a little bit with the character that I'm going to be playing for the Path of Exile beta. Uh, and for those of you guys who are unaware, it actually drops today, uh, more specifically in 3 hours, 4 minutes, and 36 seconds. Uh, I'll be live on my stream about 30 minutes before to kind of go over this YouTube video and my approach to the beta and what we're going to go ahead and do. So first off, I want to go ahead and explain to you guys, it's not really like a build guide, but more or less uh, what I'm going to go ahead and play for the beta and kind of why. You know, I think it's important to include the why part. So first off, I do want to state that if you guys have Path of Building or your offline calculator, go ahead and pull it out so we can kind of build this together. Because unfortunately, with this new OBS that I've been using, I cannot show you guys. There's nothing I can enable. Uh, I looked it up. How to show you guys like the actual skill effects it like doesn't display for some reason so that's something i'm gonna have to work out but anyway we're gonna play a scorching ray self-cast inquisitor um part of the reason why i decided to go inquisitor is i'm just gonna go over over each node one by one um scorching ray is a degen which means it's not an attack and you cannot leech off it because of the mechanics of how it works so because of that you need to kind of add an extra layer of defense because you cannot leech <clears throat> so by going Inquisitor, if we go two points in a Sanctity, um, or sorry, Sanctify, Sanctify gives us a 40% increase damage while on Consecrated Ground. If you use a Sulfur Flask, that's additional 40%, so that's 80% um, pretty much if you stand on Consecrated Ground, which is actually like quite a significant damage boost. In fact, it's more damage than the increased bo uh, burn damage support gem before the patch, well this patch to it, which makes it a multiplier. Um, these nodes are also Ellie Damage and Life Regen, which is very good. This will not be a CI character. This will be a Life Hybrid, well, a Life Mind Over Matter character. Uh, Pious Path, I believe it's called, makes it so we cannot be affected by elemental status ailments while on Consecrated Ground. So basically, as long as I'm on Consecrated Ground, I cannot be shocked, I cannot be frozen, I cannot be ignited. Note that it does not mean that you are immune to it before that, meaning if I'm frozen and I click the flask, I don't think it's going to remove it. It's just if I'm standing in it, I cannot be affected, which is important because we are playing a build that's stationary and we're going to be using something like Arctic Armor to help buff that mitigation as well. It also gives us 25% cast speed. Cast speed is huge for Scorching Ray. Um, then we would have, for example, Augury, Augury of Penitence, which is nearby enemies take 16% increased elemental damage and deal 8% less. So this is actually really good because the mobs are going to get kind of close to me. Uh, and this makes them take increased damage and deal less elemental. And then for Uber Lab, which I don't think we're going to get to do anyway, because I believe they said because Act 8 isn't out or something like that, some something along the line, because it's not like the full expansion, we're just playing a beta, we're going to be missing one of the Labyrinths, so I'm probably not going to get Instruments of Virtue. But anyway, Instruments of Virtue gives me spell damage when I cast a spell, which means when you cast Scorching Ray, you get a damage buff. And you get 30% increased cast speed if you've attacked recently. So the end game goal, I'm pretty sure, is to use a bow. Uh, so that way we can use a quiver. I will craft a plus three fire bow. This is probably not going to happen for the beta, but it's just a full-on explanation. Because by using blink arrow or mirror arrow, whichever one teleports you, I believe that's tagged as an attack. I could totally be wrong, and it's not. I do have to look this up. But I would assume that that would give me my cast speed buff. If not, we can use leap slam with a bow or with a staff with like uh, searing touch, which is probably what I'm going for. So let's talk about the important parts of this character. So the reason why I decided to do this is they added a new implicit life, um, well, an implicit role on certain pieces of gear, which gives a hybrid life role. And hybrid life role is not really that much. It's only gonna give us maybe in total like 400 extra HP, maybe a little more than that after like everything. But if you use mind over matter, you get a little bit more value from that 400 life if you can you know, totally equate that to your um, to your mana pool. And since Scorching Ray is a degen, you don't really need to use many auras. The only thing you really have is defensive options because anger doesn't work, wrath doesn't work, hatred doesn't work. Um, you know, you don't need to run purities because of reflect, like you're okay there. So you really don't have many options. So I decided to go mind over matter. Now, I decided again, Templar, it's in a good spot. So I was thinking of going Scion, but I was like, fuck it. I, I haven't really played Scorching Ray before. So let me go ahead and follow you guys what we're going to do. So we're going to start off with the Ellie damage, move in, grab Retribution, this is really good because it's cast speed as well, come through the life here through Discipline and Training. This part's optional, but I've got it right now. 20% uh, armor isn't bad, it skills a Granite Flask, 1% life regen gives me Strength and Intelligence, 
This could be swapped for here. The only reason why I have this is to grab Righteous Decree to scale my mana. Of course, if I don't need the mana, I'll remove it. Uh, came down here, Light of Divinity gives us cast speed, which is huge for our build. Uh, move down, grab the really good life cluster with Devotion and the Jewel Socket. From here, I'm going to move out, grab Mind Over Matter, which is going to give us insane survivability, early game especially, uh, and then hopefully it'll carry on into later. I grabbed Quick Recovery, moved down, picked up Elemental Equilibrium. You can get Potency of Will for the skill effect duration on Torching Ray. I have no clue exactly if I'm going to need it or not. I've never played it before, so this is something to think about. Shaper is really good for the life regen and mana regen per second. We're going to move down into Constitution and all of the life here in the Scion Life Wheel. Uh, there is an option to go multi-curse with Skittering Runes and Whispers of Doom, but because I'm going to be running Mind Over Matter, I'm going to go against that and just do a single curse on hit with an Orb of Storms. So after that, we can go ahead and come up, grab our Holy Fire, um, pretty much just get some life and purity of flesh. I decided not to get any of the Aura Reservation nodes because we're going to be running on a very high mana pool, and the only thing I think I'm going to run is probably Arctic Armor. Maybe Clarity too, but probably... Probably clarity because we'll have a high mana pool. It won't really take anything. So from there, we're going to move on. Now, this part was tricky. I didn't really know exactly which way I was supposed to go um, just because I tried connecting through top here, but then I'm like, well, how do I get inside which? I don't need spell crit. I don't use AoE. I don't have minions, and I'm not energy shield. So unfortunately, the only way for me to connect really is through practical application, which is unfortunate because I really wanted to grab the flask effect, but we're going to pass it for now. So you come in through here, Occultist Dominion gives spell damage and cast speed. Uh, practical application isn't bad, we do get strength and dex. Dex should be used for rapid decay, uh, which is one of the multipliers in our support gems. Uh, we come over here, Deep Wisdom's good, maximum mana and intelligence. We also get Heart and Soul, which is really good to our build because it's life and mana. So down here, I've got a two point jewel socket. You could convert your energy shield to mana here. Um, so this is definitely an option to choose, and then you would still get life, which isn't really that bad of an option. Um, or is it only life? Sorry, I don't think you can convert the energy shield to mana, just the life. So I don't know. This is still like a, a, a question mark spot, really. Um, so I'm kind of just leaving that alone. Like I said, I'm not too happy with this pathing, but it's the way I have to go. Well, at least from what I know. So from there, I decided to move onward. We've got Written in Blood here for some extra life can grab Growth and Decay over here. We've also got the Cold Hearted Calculation, uh, which gives us Spell Damage, Mono Region, Intelligence. Come through the Ellie Damage, grab Trickery, pick up Blood Siphon. Coordination is really good because 6% cast speed. Entropy into Fangs of Viper, which gives us Movement Speed and Dex. Again, hopefully the Dex is going to be used for Rapid Decay. Um, yeah, alternatively, you could just go like this, for example. <clears throat> then I popped into nullification. Basically, these three points were justified because it's all res, maximum life. And then right here we get 6% life nodes and an 8% life node. And that's pretty much the character that we have designed, which gives us a total of 70% uh, burn damage, 99% damage over time, 104% elemental. We get like 59% cast speed from Inquisitor. Um, we get a ton more cast speed just kind of down the line. We get 100% spell damage. Uh, elemental Overload, we've got 300 Intelligence, 200 Strength, 100 Dex. Uh, we also have, where's the important stuff here? Here's the important stuff. We get a total of 100% Mono Regen from the tree, which should scale really well with Clarity. We get 208% Maximum Life, 120% Maximum Mana, 4.2% Life Regen per second. Pious Path, uh, I forgot to mention as well, gives us... 4% mana um, and energy shield regenerated per second while on consecrated ground. So on top of having a damage bonus, we're generating life. We also regenerate mana uh, and are immune to status ailments on consecrated ground. With Arctic Armor, which is the self-defense buff that we're going to use, you know, it's like your aura, it gives us physical mitigation and fire mitigation while standing still. Furthermore, in the Pantheon system, which is something I want to test really badly in this beta, there are Pantheon buffs, which are pretty much all defensive from what I know. Um, there are bonuses for standing still. So Scorching Ray <clears throat> would get the longer channel. Um, I think the damage ramps up from it because of that. Then you would get the Arctic Armor benefit, you'd get the Consecrated Ground benefit, and then you would get the Pantheon bonuses for standing still as well. So you'd be rewarded for playing a stationary character. 
Now hopefully with this setup I can have enough regeneration to my mana and my life pool to hopefully not die. The biggest concern of course is like monster attack speed. If the monsters just wail on me and beat the shit out of me that's really bad. So I may have to run like a cast from damage taken temporal chains. Uh, I may use <clears throat> a one-hander like Singularity to hinder their movement speed. We'll see what's going to happen in the beta. All that stuff is up in the air. I got to actually play the character first. Now, they also said that um, they're changing the increased burn damage support gem to a multiplier. So it'll be a multiplier to your uh, burning damage instead of an increase. That's a retarded amount of damage to most builds. So that's pretty cool to think of. And I believe they said they're adding in a new keystone for damage over time, question mark. Um, I haven't really updated too much of the information, but I'm pretty sure they said there's going to be a keystone. So I've got some points with some flexibility, so I'm not really too concerned about that. Um, and the last thing to go over is this build does get 208% max life with Mind Over Matter with 120% maximum mana. So on the defensive side, again, hopefully it's okay. Uh, I was really against playing a CI character or an ES character in the beginning because... You know, this is a beta. There's no reason to go fucking try hard, right? Like, I want to figure out, you know, how life is going to play out. So hopefully I can go back to playing life-based builds in the future. Because the CI meta was a lot of fun. And there's nothing wrong with CI. It's still great. It's just I want to have that flexibility again of saying, oh, I don't have to play it this way. And that's what the beta is meant for, right? Let's test to see where we can get with. Or, you know, test to see how far we can get away with. I think something like that. Anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Remember, if you're curious to check out the build and what I'm going to be doing, feel free to head over to twitch.tv slash box. I'll have my stream live 30 minutes before the beta actually starts to kind of go over, you know, the support gems and everything that I'm going to be using because I don't really know everything off the top of my head. If you're curious, it should be quite self-explanatory. It's pretty much stack your multipliers. So like Scorching Ray, Rapid Decay, Control Destruction, uh, Elemental Focus, you could throw an Empower in there. Increase burn damage as a multiplier now. Do not use Penetration because it's not an on-hit effect, so that doesn't work. They pretty much just layer your multipliers. You also have things like Faster Casting. But like I said, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you're curious, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. And I'll be on there right before the beta starts, 30 minutes before going over this character again. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. And I'll see you boys in the beta. Take care, everyone.